Hey everyone, I'm Lyle, Product Manager at Xenoma. Xenoma 1.18 has arrived and it's one of the most feature-packed releases yet. In this release, we are one step closer to achieving our goal of delivering a truly remarkable Secure Access Service Edge or SASE product to help address the security concerns of an ever-expanding hyper-distributed remote workforce. And we're doing this by making use of our industry-first plug and secure anywhere approach to network security. So to achieve this, Xenoma 1.18 has become more organization focused and user centric with the ability to create central organization based security policies not just around device categories or networks but around users and groups that are using those particular devices. We've also introduced new identity and access management and single sign-on capabilities and an all new organization dashboard giving you complete control and visibility of all your gateways and your endpoint deployments. Speaking of endpoint deployments, as of this release, you will now be able to deploy Xenarmor natively on Microsoft Windows devices, affording you additional deployment possibilities. Users can now benefit from Xenarmor's great protection locally on their Windows endpoint, regardless of which network they're connected to. It's true on-the-go security without being tethered to a VPN. So introducing our all new organization dashboard. This dashboard was designed to give you a bird's eye view or a high level view of your global organization deployment. It easily gives you the ability to quickly identify any immediate high level threats that may be actively impacting your specific gateways, your endpoints or specific regions, allowing you to quickly investigate the potential threat further and act upon it. As threats are detected across your various regions, or your gateways, or your endpoints, you'll notice that these circles that you see on the global map will grow in size where most of the threats are coming from. And from there, you'll be able to have a great starting point to be able to dive in and investigate what is impacting the network. The organization dashboard is also great to identify where particular endpoints are located or gateways in your global network. And we've also included some features here where you have the ability to quickly determine what the most used apps are within your network, as well as a breakdown of that and what the top web categories are at a glance. And then for those of you that are worried about users and bandwidth hogs or people that are using a lot of bandwidth on your network, We've included the option below to look at the total traffic for the entire organization over time, as well as the top consuming uh, devices that are using bandwidth on your network, as well as the top users. Keep in mind that this is a staging environment, so we don't have a lot of users and devices connected to this organization. But over here, for example, if you clicked on your top users, you'd actually be able to see the user account that they have within your organization. So that could be an email address. And you'll easily be able to filter from here down exactly to what that user is viewing on your network. So keep in mind that this dashboard is only available for people that have SSE edition subscriptions and above. Uh, rest assured though, if you're on a business subscription or a home subscription or free, you will still have the same Zen console dashboard that you're already familiar with. So no stress there. But we do encourage everybody to consider looking at our latest SSE and our future uh, SASE subscriptions that we've created because we feel they're going to give everybody a huge amount of additional value over the other subscriptions. Just a few other notes about the organization dashboard. Because we give you the ability to have multiple gateways and endpoints deployed globally within this organization, we've also included a means for all the gateways and endpoints to be able to stream their reporting data back to Zen Console, regardless of where they are. And they will also be part of a consolidated organization-wide report, which is made available to you. And this will include all the great filtering capabilities that you are already accustomed to. So 
no matter the size of your global organization that you configure within Zen Console, you will be able to have full visibility of every device and endpoint. And also just another note for some of our MSPs or our MSSP partners, this new organization, organization dashboard delivers enhanced multi-tenancy capabilities where you can enroll multiple organizations under one partner account and you can manage each of your organizations on an individual basis through Zen Console. And you also have the ability to invite administrators from each organization respectively and provide them with roles that define their level of control that they have over the organization. So exploring the organization dashboard a little bit further, you'll see we've included a new settings menu where here you have all the ability to be able to configure your organization, ranging from general settings, changing the names and so forth, to managing users and groups, as well as the administrators with inside your organization, your endpoints, as well as global TLS inspection, which was made available in the previous release version 1.17 for all once again of our SS SE subscribers. So to make Xenoma more user-centric, we've introduced identity and access management capabilities into this release. So this gives you the ability to authenticate your existing users, possibly you use IntraID or Google Workspace or Workplaces rather, and you want to bring those existing users from your organization into Zen Console, you have the ability to do that here. So as of this release, we currently offer three main authentication methods. The first being built-in authentication and where you can set up your user and password-based authentication built into Zen Console. And this is really ideal for smaller organizations that don't use identity providers like Azure, IntraID or Okta or Google Cloud Identity. And then our second authentication method that we brought into this release is generic SAML 2.0. And this is ideal for bigger organizations that already make use of Azure Intra ID or any other SAML 2.0 capable provider. Uh, as of this release though, it must be noted that we currently only support Intra ID, Okta and Google providers. However, in future releases, we will make this more customizable where you can introduce or bring in your own custom uh, SAML providers such as Authentic that you can use to authenticate your users against those types of services. And then the third and the final authentication me method that we've introduced in this release is Google Cloud Identity. So this is ideal for organizations that already make use of Google Workspace and that ecosystem and it's been fully integrated into this release where we can bring all the users across and their groups from your Google Workspace account and automatically ingest them into Zen Console. And you can also use this as a means to authenticate those particular users as well. Please keep in mind that Skim and LDAP functionality, it's coming soon in the next or in future releases. So we'll be able to have an automated means to import users and groups into Zen Console much easier using those technologies in the not too distant future. So using one of the above mentioned authentication methods, uh, you can easily enforce network control based on your users and groups. And you can also enforce SSO before a user accesses any kind of web resources, uh, either through a browser based agentless authentication process uh, initiated by your gateways, or if you're using the native Windows Zen Armor application, you users will need to sign into the application anyway using their organization details before they can access the network. Both of these enforcement mechanisms can be used simultaneously across your endpoints and your gateways, giving you the ultimate control over your organization's users and groups. We've also included the ability for you to exclude certain device categories or gateways from SSO authentication on your network. So if you have particular devices you don't need to authenticate, perhaps IoT devices or things along those lines, you can exclude them from SSO authentication while enforcing it on other devices. So now that we've covered the identity access management and the new organization, organization dashboard, I think it makes sense to talk a little bit about our new organizational based policies that we offer. So there's a few changes, slight changes to the policies if you've been using Zen Console 
well in the past. And the reason we had to do this was in order to be able to cater for the different types of policies and the devices that we're targeting. So in this case, we have gateways with policies that we target, and then we also have endpoints. So we created a organizational global policy mechanism to achieve this. You'll simply create a new policy and you'll notice that it's slightly different to how you've initiated it in the past. There's a new step where you'll give it a name and a description, and then you can choose who does this particular policy target. Is it all users on your network or is it all groups or is it a select number of users? These users here will be populated once you've connected to your SAML provider and included them within Zen Console. And then you can simply choose where does this policy apply? So is it an endpoint or is it a gateway? Or you can, you can simply apply them onto both. So just to demo this, let's quickly create a policy. We'll call it test and we'll apply it to all users and all groups. And we'll enable this one on endpoints. You'll also see here that you have the ability if you select endpoints to select specific endpoints. Those are the Windows devices or later the Mac OS devices that will be included in as endpoints and you can simply create the policy. And once the policy has been created, you'll notice that there's some slight differences in here, the way that we organized how the matching criteria works. So from here, you'll have a blanket block action where you can simply say no internet at all and you can block all uh, these devices or untrusted devices from accessing the internet. And then we've once again to make this user centric included the ability to manage the users and the group matching criteria, which I think is quite self-explanatory. And then we've brought in endpoint matching criteria and gateway matching criteria and all the usual matching criteria for the gateway will also be included in here such as matching on interfaces or devices or categories or networks or MAC addresses and so forth. And then finally, for those of you that use time-based matching criteria, this remains unchanged in this release. So organization dashboards, SSO and policies aside, I've saved the best of our new capabilities of this release for last. And I want to introduce to you our latest Windows native Zenarmor application. So what we've done is we've taken all the goodness of Zenarmor that runs on OpenSense and FreeBSD and Linux, and we've ported the engine across to Windows. So what this means is now you have the ability to take Zenarmor with you wherever you go, be it on your Windows laptop, or you could even have it installed on a desktop computer for that matter. And regardless of the network that you are connected to, you will always be secured by the Zenarmor engine because all of the inspection that happens through the, the Zenarmor engine is now locally on this particular device's uh, network interface. So this means that you no longer have to backhole your traffic via a VPN connection to a gateway running Zenarmor uh, to, to have your traffic inspected. It will all happen locally on this particular device. Also, depending on your type of your network deployment that you have or your type of your organization, you may not even need to use a perimeter gateway considering that all the inspection is now happening locally on your device. So this makes network security really easy to deploy for companies that don't need gateways. And uh, it's a simple software-based installation uh, on, a, on a Windows device. And and all the management happens through the Zen Console cloud as you are already familiar with. So once a policy is created, it automatically gets sent down to each of the targeted endpoints. And all of the reporting data generated by this particular endpoint is sent back up into Zen Console for you to inspect or manage further. So as part of our plug and secure approach to SASE, this is how we intend to secure distributed and remote workforces easily by using using our Windows application. And we believe this is a major step forward in bringing the network edge closer than ever before to an endpoint without any of the shortcomings that are often associated with cloud only SASE solutions such as additional latency or pop outages or other uncertain complexities that degrade the overall user experience. And the same applies for people making use of traditional VPN technologies that 
backhaul their traffic to a on-prem instance of Zenarmor and have to have all the inspection done away from the client. The same applies here. Now you can inspect all your traffic locally and have the same level of control regardless of where your users are in their network. And if you're a Mac user and you're feeling left out, don't worry, we have a native version of Zenarmor for Mac OS. It's currently in its final stages of development and we're just ironing out the bugs. So we'll release that as soon as it's done. So just a quick walkthrough of the Zenarmor application running on Windows. We've made it really as simple as possible. Once the user installs Zenarmor on their machine through a link, they'll be required to sign into the organization using their organization credentials. In this case, we just have, as I said, a state environment so we have the user as my company and my company and from here they have very basic control over Zen Armor so you can start or stop the engine and also restart the cloud agent we're also working on a way where we can totally lock this application down for end users so that they don't have any control over starting or stopping the engine or agents this is all part of our strategy to create a means where if users try to tamper with our software to get around security that it's not so easy to do so. We've also included some basic user statistics uh, that you can use for basic diagnostic purposes if you need be. And then we have some very basic settings here as well. So nothing over the top that's been designed purposely to be lightweight to run in the background without bothering anybody. It's a simple install, login, and you have all your security benefits, all your network security benefits that you get from Zen Armor. Also, you may be asking, what is the secure private network access? Well, this is where we're going in our next release, uh, which we will be announcing in the next couple of months, if not sooner, where we are currently working on building a ZTNA VPN replacement where you could build overlay networks across your organization very easily and then provide control and micro segmentation over those type of links as well. So keep an eye on social media, on your email if you're already a subscriber, and we will start releasing announcements about that sooner than later. So wrapping things up, we've been working really hard behind the scenes to bring you the latest major release of Zen Armor, and we truly hope you enjoy using it as much as what we enjoyed creating it. We really appreciate every single one of you that has supported us and helped us get to this point in our long development journey. If you'd like to see a full list of all the additions and changes and bug fixes that was made, please feel free to have a look at our release notes on our website. So that's everything that I want to share with you today. Hopefully you found this video useful and I'll see everybody in the next one. Take care for now.